I'm going to now show you how to do the fitting our RGBW LED system for the A5. Um, it's the same process on an A4, just slightly different PCB diagram. So these are the new boards. As you can see, they, they will look the same as the original ones. They just have a different LED chip on there. They also have an extra wire coming off that. First of all, once you're in your bare shell of a headlight, you need to remove the original PCBs. So you want to undo that wire there, and then two torque screws. We will be removing this board. Once you've got that out, you then want to turn your A5 headlight around. You're then going to undo two torque screws on this PCB here. And that one. What you will notice is when you're trying to pull that, it may not pull. That's because there's a small tab. You want to put your finger through there and you want to find that small tab. You'll feel it with your finger. And that is what you are left with. We won't need the headlight for a bit. Next part of the process, we need to remove the plastic trim on here. What I would use is I would use a, a small flathead screwdriver, which you're going to remove two clips, which are holding your plastic on. And then you're going to get four tabs here, which then hold the plastic to the heat sink. You just want to clip that with your hand like that. And slide the first one off. You're then going to undo the four clips around that and slide that off. You're left with your bare PCB. Grab the larger one and undo that clip with your screwdriver and you're now left with that. Next step is we need to remove the original PCBs away from the heat sinks. Um, the reason we do this, we still need to retain the heat sinks so the LEDs don't die out quickly. We do this by using a really thin flathead screwdriver. What you want to do is you want to grab your screwdriver and pass it in underneath one of the corners um, and then literally get enough in there to get a larger screwdriver in. Them two small tabs there, that's what's holding the heat sink down and you just wanna turn the screwdriver around, twist it and that will come away. The larger, the larger board, what we do is we get the screwdriver into the side there and we just turn it like that both ways just to make room for us to, to get our screwdriver in. And then once you've got enough room there, you're just going to twist the screwdriver both and you are going to remove the heat sink. Once you've, once you've got the LED boards off, you will see that there's a residue left on each of the heat sinks. We just use a scotch pad just to clean that down, get all of that off there just so there's a nice clean surface so when we're going to glue the new LEDs back on to these. We've cleaned up all the heat sinks, we've taken off all the old glue residue and we are ready to go. The new glue that we're going to use is JB Quick. This can be bought from any hardware store, online, eBay, Amazon. Make sure it is the JB Quick 2 part. Um, usually around £7, if it's in dollars, around $8, $9, so it's not expensive stuff. Really, really easy to use. You just mix up a bit on, on a board, 2 part. You put a small drop on each part of the heat sink, so one at the top, one at the bottom, which we're going to show you now.
offset that, just remove your clamps. Um, I let that dry for around 12 minutes there. You will see that I've only glued one on. The reason I've not done both is on an A5, if you were to then glue that on, there is no way of actually attaching this back on to your headlight. So, next step is once the first part is dry, you want to put you want to clip this holder back on. You need to push down on that on both sides. Just make sure that it is going to hold down one clip and then your screwdriver just use that if you need to help and you're back on there. And then going to grab your headlight and you need to feed the smaller board through the headlight, including the wiring, and then just tuck the heatsink back on and screw that back on there. Your next step is going to be gluing a smaller board to the heat, heat sink, but before you do that, you do need to put the plastic clips back on. If you don't put the plastic holders back on, there's no way you're going to get them on after you have glued down the boards. So first of all, you need the larger one of the two. That's going to go on first. That's just going to tuck around both wires like that. And then you're going to put the second one on again that's going to tuck around that and then the same process as the first mix your glue up a few dabs on there stick it down 10 minutes to dry right so back again after another 12 minutes that one has now dried fully what we then want to do is we want to start to reassemble the plastic trims and the holders that hold all of this into place so you just want to sort of go around there make sure no wires are catching and again with the top one, clip that on there like that. Don't forget to put your your lock pins back down into that. They both go in the designated area. And we are done. What you then want to do is this will then screw back into its holder where you took it from before. But before we screw that back down, we're now going to have to do the wiring, which we're now going to show you where the driver boxes go. Now, wiring the DRL boards, obviously um, what we need to do is work out what goes where. So, that's your driver box. Without this driver, the new DRL system will not work. Um, you've got your white cable here. That will plug it in to the white cable that is coming off your DRL boards. You've then got a black cable. The black cable is for if you want to run a Bluetooth controller to have the colour mode, which 95% of people that have bought this have bought the colour mode. The separate wires that come off here, you've got you've got four wires. The white wire we don't really tend to use. The purpose of the white wire is it dims the system down, um, but due to the error system on the Audis, if we dim the system down, you will be left with a constant error. So we just snip that wire off and it's not used. Your red wire is your DRL Live. That will do the white mode when you turn your headlights on, so you don't have to have the Bluetooth controller on. Your black wire is your ground or your earth. Again, that needs to be solid. And you've got your amber feed. The amber feed, you connect that up if you want your DRL rods to flash amber when you do your turn signals. This runs with the original indicator which we do supply an LED so the LED flash does sync. So we're going to show you how to now wire in everything. Um, this is a method we chose choose to do. You can do it whichever way you feel is easy. We feel that because the headlights are open we might as well use the wiring that's inside. First of all what we do is we we even out all the wiring here. You, you can trim that wiring down if you want to. Uh, we tend to keep it the length that we've supplied the wiring on. Um, we've done this for a few reasons is some people like to hide all their driver boxes and stuff um, so we might as well do the wire a lot longer so we've trimmed all the wires even like that uh, remember we said about the white wire we don't really need that so we can cut that there and get rid of that we then get the grommet that's 
sits behind the rear indicator. We make the smallest hole in there possible. Don't want it too big, you don't want any moisture or water to get in afterwards. You're then going to be looking out towards it and you're going to feed all the wires into that small hole there. Once that's through, you're going to push the grommet all the way to the driver and then bring the head dot forward so you can get ready to work on it. The three wires, we're going to poke through the back of the headlight and we're going to come forward like that. Now, the easiest way that we identify this wiring inside because it is all black is so your amber feed how you want to do this is you want to grab your indicator bulb and you want to follow the wiring back now you will see that there's two feeds you'll get one feed which is your ground will go to a heat shrinked wire with a few other wires connected to it there you've then got your live feed which then goes to pin number nine which is on its own now to get the numbers of each individual connector they are labelled on the plastic if you look very very closely they are numbered um, in the instruction card inside your box they are the, the pinouts will be numbered there so you want to go amber is pin number nine you want to take the ground which is the opposite of pin number nine and then your red wire is going to go for pin number ten which is the top one of an A5 head. Right, so once you've soldered your wires in, what you need to do is just put some electric tape around the connections. Right hand headlight you will also see that where I've connected the red wire to pin number 10 I have also ran a separate extended wire on the red. The reason we've done this is so on the right hand headlight you will need to run your resistor. On your left hand headlight you will need to run your Bluetooth controller and again this is the way we do it and we like to extend that wiring. If you have any questions on that, feel free to email us your order number for your DRL kit and we'll be happy to help with any questions regarding that. Apart from that, that's the wiring done. As you can see, it's not as daunting, it's not as hard as it, it looks. Once you're in there and you know where you're going with it, everything's simple. Before you go, please make sure that you do buy our LED indicators. These will swap out the original halogen bulb for the LED bulb and it will make the indicator flash in sync if you are connecting the amber feed of the DRL up. It will also make it look more modern and brighter. But if you have any questions, as said before, just email us your order number and we'll be happy to help with this product.